This is the Stratomatic Baseball Excel 1973 Carryover League. Brought to you by the Shrimp Trawler YouTube channel. Welcome back, baseball fans, the 1970-73 Summer Carryover League. We are in some action in the National League East. Final series before the All-Star break involving uh, two teams with a lot of chatter about them. Uh, defending world champion New York Mets having a fantastic year and the Braves assembling a fantastic roster. They would meet to see who's going to go into first place for the All-Star break. This series opened up in Shea Stadium in New York. Let's see what happened in game number one. We have Tom Kelly, number four starters. Tom Kelly for the Braves. Uh, Jim Bunning for the Mets. This one is a pretty interesting game. We have a RBI single by the suddenly red-hot Rico Cardi. Top of the third inning. Uh, bottom top of the first inning. Bottom of the third, we have a two-out, two-run double by Cleon Jones. It's 2-1 Mets. And then Hank Aaron with a solo homer. It's 2-2. Bottom of the inning, a sack fly by Ted Martinez. 3-2. Then uh, a big fifth inning for the Mets. A single, a walk double, and then an RBI single by Ed Cranepool. They get a total of six runs in the first five frames. 6-2 game. Hank Aaron's not giving up, though. He has a second solo home run. Mets has a few more in the seventh. I tell you, the Mets just know how to get on base, but they also know how to bring in those runners to get on base. Surprisingly, few stranded base runners for the Mets, I've noticed, in this season. Versus a team like the Dodgers, who gets a ton of guys on and leave them on the bases. And the New, uh, New York Yankees do it as well. Put a bunch of guys on, leave them on the bases. Mets get the runs. That's mark of a well-executed lineup for this team, for this assembly of players. And uh, Jim Bunning, a guy they brought in as a free agent in the offseason, just to man the number four spot, went five and two-thirds innings and collects the win with a parade of Met relievers finishing it. 8-4 final in Shea Stadium. Now the task for the Braves is how to get a split in Shea. And to do that in game two, it'll be a battle of aces. Phil Necro, Tom Seaver. Pretty much this game is a tale of defense. Bottom of the first inning. A single, the runner moves to second on a ground ball, then with two outs, the normally reliable Hank, Error, Hank Aaron makes a two base error, Hank Error, Aaron, uh, unfortunately for Hank, and that gives the Mets a run. Then we have solo homers by Wayne Garrett in the third, and two solo homers by Rico Cardi in the fourth, and six. It's a 2-2 game. Bottom of the seventh inning, tied at two. You have Bud Harrelson with a single. Jerry Grody rolls the hit and run double, puts the guys at second and third, and then this is where it falls badly for the Braves. A ground ball to the shortstop, Marty Perez, and he boots the ground ball allowing a run to score, and then another run scores with a single. So, Negro put eight men on base, Seaver put seven men on base. It was a defense that let the Braves down, and the Mets walk away with a 4-2 win. Uh, Negro and Seaver both have the complete games. So, the Braves come away empty, but they know they do their best work at home in Atlanta. Oh, Atlanta, the Braves with this incredible power-laden offense. They go home to Game 3, desperately needing a win as to not go down 0-3. And we'll take a peek at what happens in Game 3, known as the debacle in Atlanta. It opened up as a nice day in the city of Atlanta. A nice sunny day, fans coming out in droves. They're rooting for their team to beat the big bad defending champion uh, World Series champion New York Mets. 
The Mets will send John Matlack against Pat Jarvis in a battle of number two starters. Pretty innocent game early on. An RBI single by Willie Mays in the top of the first. And then the Braves tie it in the bottom of the third. RBI single by Dusty Baker. In the fourth inning, we get a solo homer by Ed Cranbull. It's 2-1. to one. Still seems like a pretty nice, tight, interesting game by two good baseball teams. And then the fifth inning happens. Pat Jarvis of the Atlanta Braves implodes historically. I don't know how to measure this amount of history, but in the fifth inning, the New York Mets hit everything they could possibly hit and more and it absolutely unloaded on Pat Jarvis and a parade of relievers. In the fifth inning, the New York Mets scored. Are you ready, folks? They scored 11 times. And, excuse me, 10 times. Actually, 11 times, yes. Um, with 12 hits plus an error thrown in here, just too much to talk about. It's just they rolled everything. Uh, it's uh, yeah. Let's see who got out. So uh, let's see. So Willie Mays grounded out in the inning. Wayne Garrett popped out, and I believe uh, yeah. But everybody else got a hit or a double, and disaster, absolute disaster for the Atlanta Braves. And of course, everybody folded up their tents after that. The final score: the New York Mets 14, the Atlanta Braves won. The line for Jarvis, four and a third innings, 12 hits, 10 runs, nine earned. But Joe Horland came in in that same inning, didn't help. Four hits and three more runs. The Mets finished the day with 20 hits. Unbelievable. This Met team can really hit the ball. And they're playing better than they did last year when they won the World Series. And frankly, they played better than any Mets team that I can recall. Uh, as far as this assembly of players, it's unbelievable. The Mets have a higher target, though. They won the World Series last year, and they did it with a pretty ordinary regular season. Now, this year, they're having a monster regular season, but in past years, we've seen teams with monster regular seasons like the Cincinnati Reds and Boston Red Sox fade in the playoffs, so the Mets are trying to avoid that. So, going for a sweep, and speaking of sweeps and losing streaks, the Braves... In the last series against the Florida Marlins, they were up 3-0 and dropped four straight. So the Atlanta Braves are on a seven-game losing streak. Let's take a look at the standings as well as we go into this game. Um, yeah, the American League East is, a, is no more for the Braves. They blew that. The Mets are 19-7. and seven. If they win one more game in this series to win this series, they get that 20th win. If you win 20 games for the All-Star break in this format, it means you've won every series you've played. And that's what the Mets are shooting for. The Cincinnati Reds have won 19. And, of course, the Reds lost to the Mets head-to-head -head, uh, three games to two when they played each other. This is what the National League looks like. The Mets and the Reds and 14 other teams at this point. The Braves fall back to the pack at, four, uh, at 500 with the Marlins and Cardinals and the Rockies and the Diamondbacks, Astros and Giants and the disappointing Pittsburgh team who suddenly could find some life at 300 500 if they can get hot and surprise everybody as a wild card. So let's get right back here into game number four from Atlanta. Today's starting pitchers for the Mets, it'll be 1973 Jerry Kuzman card. Was 14 and 15, but a 284 ERA on the New York Mets. And he will go against a former teammate of his from that same year, George Stone. 12 and 3 with a 280 ERA for the 73 Mets. Now the Mets, of course, they couldn't keep all their guys. And they can only have three lefties on the team, and they have Matt Lack, C, uh, Matt Lack, Kuzman, and McGraw. So George Stone was left available, and the Braves scooped him up. Actually, Stone was a Brave and just continued his stay on the team. Um, interesting, too, that uh, these cards would have run consecutively in, in your 1973 New York Met Pack, if you have that set, uh, with Stone's ERA a couple points lower than Kuzman's. They gave George Stone the six-column template, and they gave Kuzman the five-column template. That's how you know they run consecutively. 
when you're storing your cards there. Kuzman and Stone for the 1973 Mets. All right, heck of a pregame because, well, it's been a kind of a lame series. Three games to nothing. Let's get started from Atlanta. Game number 453. Leading off for the Mets is Cleon Jones. 1-3, skies the right. Jerry Grody, 49, pops out. Willie Mays, 46, skies the center. Bottom of the first. Felix, putting me on. 1-9, oh, we're not. He's grinding out the short. Mari Wills, card in the offseason. 2-10, let's take a look at Mari's card. Mari, uh, a couple stints, different stints with the Dodgers. He was with the Expos for a brief period as well in their expansion year. He was a free agent, and the Braves needed help at shortstop. And 2-10 against the lefty for Mari Wills is Homer, 1-13, and it is gone. It's a lot of home runs for a guy. He had three home runs in a full season, but two of them were against lefties. He doesn't have power, so they give him a big homer chance on the roll of 10 of homer 1 to 13, and that's one of them. So Mari Wills, timely at bat here in the first. Rico Cardi, 49, it's a strikeout. And Hank Aaron, 412, rolls to the pitcher. Top of two, Clendenon, 110, bounce to short. Duffy Dyer, 2-5, short. And Dave Marshall, 2-10, flies to right field. Bottom of the second, it's Darrell Evans. 2-2 two -two is a strikeout plus an injury. He's gone. The Braves are going to be looking for a third baseman today. Back up. And the pickings are slim here, so who can play third for the injured Darrell Evans in the top of the next inning? Uh, boy. You're going to have to move Earl Williams over there. And you know what? Mari Wills can play third base, believe it or not. Mari Wills. Yeah, he's a 40-29 at third base, so he'll play third in the top of the inning, and Marty Perez will go play short. Darrell Evans, that's a big loss for the Braves in this, in this pivotal game. Dusty Baker's up. 2-6 is a double to left field. Billy Cohen, 2-3, grounds a short. And with two outs, it's Tommy Aaron. 2-5, let's take a look at Tommy Aaron's card here in Atlanta. Uh, his statistics aren't particularly good in 63 at-bats with a 206 batting average. But he had loaded all of that against left-handed pitching. And that is gone. A big two-run homer for the Braves as they're trying to make a stand here in Game 4. Earl Williams, 62, rolls to first. They need George Stone to have a great start against his former team, or future team, depending on how you look at it. Bud Harrelson, 310, skies the left. Bobby Heiss, 69. Bouncer to second X. Mian is good at 218 at second base, makes the play. And Ted Martinez, 66, is going to be a single. First hit for the Mets. Cleon Jones. 1-5, let's take a look at Cleon Jones, 1971 card for the Mets. Uh, just a slight step down from his 69 card where he hit 340. This card will hit you 319, 14 home runs and 550 plate appearances. But 1-5 is Homer, 1-18, rolls the 7, and we got a ball game. 3-2. Jerry Grody with two outs. 1-9 is a walk. And Willie Mays, acquired in the offseason from the Giants. The pitch to Willie Mays, 3-6 is ball four. Stone is suddenly, after get, getting eight straight outs, the Mets are doing what they did in game three. Now let's take a look at Don Clendenon before he bats, folks. With two on and two outs, Don Clendenon's 1970 card. Wow, 288, 22 home runs and under 400 at-bats. He would actually... We know him to be the 69 World Series star, but he is, had a better year in 70 than 69. Big moment here for the Mets. The pitch to Don Clendenon. One, four is a sky to left field. Three, two, bottom of the third. Felix putting me on. Two, six, he is with a base hit. He is a B stealer, but you got the minus three arm of Grody. They like to hit and run with Mari Wills and Mian. They're going to do it. 
A six is rolled, which means the runner advances to second base. And that's how you avoid the Jerry Birdie arm. Rico Cardi, 45, pops to second. Now with two outs, it's Hank Aaron. 57 off Kuzman as a K. Top of the fourth, Duffy Dyer, 2-6, bounce to third. Dave Marshall, 4-10, center X. Uh, Baker is a 2-5 in center field, makes the catch. And Bud Harrelson. 64 off of Stone, well, that's a home run if you have power, and of course Buddy does not, nor did he hit one even. So that's going to be a single. He is an ace stealer, and you've got a plus one arm of Earl Williams, so Bud will try and get in a scoring position. He rolls a one. He's there. The T rating. Let's check it out for Earl Williams. It's a one to six, so the ball does not go all the way in the center field. So Buddy will stay at second with two outs, and it'll be Bobby Heiss. 59 off of Stone, skies the right. George Stone delivering thus far. It'll be Marty Perez for the injured uh, Darrell Evans. 39, double one, single. Nice play for Dusty by Marty Perez. Dusty Baker, 2-7. Double one of four is a single dot dot. Not a sharp day at all for Kuzman. He's put men on in every inning. Runners on the corners, down a run. I think they're going to bring the infield up. 2-4, that is a 5-3 for the infield up. So the runner at first goes to second. Now you got second and third. They're going to keep it up for Tom Aaron, who had the big homer earlier. 2-2 two -two is left A. So that's a long fly ball that will be a sack fly. That will score Marty Perez. And it gets Dusty Baker to third base with two outs and a 4-2 game for Earl Williams. 46, Kuzman walks him. Runners on the corners, two outs, Felix Mian. 1-9 is a grounder to short. 4-2 game into the fifth. Ted Martinez in the Mets. 1-9 is a single. And now we'll see some batters coming to the plate as the tie run. Cleon Jones, 48, is popped to short. Jerry Grody, 67, is a base hit into center field. Ted Martinez has wheels, folks. He could go coast to coast here. Uh, 16, but you got a minus one arm in center field. Uh, with one out, I like going coast to coast with one out. He's going to try it one to 15, and he advances on a 12. So you do have runners on the corners with one out. With the two-run lead, the Braves will play it back, hoping for a double play. And here's the pitch to Willie Mays. 2-8 is a single to left field. So the speedy Martinez scores. Grody will not try that first to third thing. He'll stay put at second. And here we are in the fifth inning again with the New York Mets. And it's Don Clendenon. Oh, boy. And another problem with the Braves is they have a really bad bullpen. Stone is one of the best pitchers on the team. He's just got a Brendan Barrett. He's a starter seven. He's not going anywhere. So you have first and second with one out and a 4-3 lead. Here's Don Clendenon. 3-10 is a fly ball left. And with two outs, Duffy Dyer. 3-10 is a K. Nice comeback for George Stone in the inning. It's 4-3. Let's pause a moment for a station identification. This is the Shrimp Trawler video channel. Este es el canal de videos de camaroneros. Bottom of the fifth, Mari Wills leads it off. 64, bounce to third. This is Ted Martinez, a third, a 3 33 a third base. It's going to be a single. Rico Cardi, 311, flies to right field. Hank Aaron, 2 5. Let's take a look at Hank Aaron's car to 1971. Runner up, along with Willie Stargell, to Joe Torrey for your 71 National League MVP. That is gone. A two-run blast for Hank Aaron. 327 with 47 home runs. My goodness. And the Braves have a 6-3 lead. Marty Perez, 59, rolls the second. Jerry Kuzman, not having a good, good day at all. Dusty Baker, 
611, back to the mound. Kuzman is an E11 pitcher. He makes the play. Three run lead for the Braves. Still not safe with, this, with our porous bullpen. We'll go to the sixth inning. It's Dave Marshall. 512's a walk. Bud Harrelson, 1 3, lines the third. Bobby Heiss, 2 7, is a line already short. And with two outs, Ted Martinez, 1 5, is a grounder to short. Bottom of the sixth, Kuzman continues. Billy Cohen, 2 7, single. Tommy Aaron, 37 as a K. Earl Williams, 5'10. Catcher's card. Grody's a 2 5 catcher. And he makes an error. Wow. A rare error on a catcher. So we have two on with one out. Mets pretty lackluster effort today. Felix Mion, 33, pops to second. And with two outs, it is Mari Wills, 39, grounds to short. Six to three in the seventh inning. Stone, this is a breaking inning. I think you got to break him to get him out of there. Cleon Jones leads off. 35 is a single. Grody, eh, if you were, if the game was closer, you'd try it hit and run, but you're down three runs, and that's too risky a play here. Two six is a pop to first. Willie Mays, 210 is a sky to center, and with two outs, it's Clendenon. 37 is a walk. And here's your tie run, Duffy Dyer. Let's take a look at his card against the lefty. This is Stone's breaking batter. Duffy Dyer, even though his stats aren't particularly good, 231 and 325 at-bats with 8 homer, 17 double, 3 triple, happens to have a lot of extra base hits on his card against lefties. The pitch to Duffy Dyer. 110 is a hit by the pitch. That breaks Stone for Dave Marshall. Now what do you do? You got a broken George Stone on the mound, and this bullpen is very shaky. <sighs> They're gonna go take him out after six and two thirds. I'll play it kind of straight up as if he can't throw anymore. He's exhausted. And also it takes him off the hook. He can't lose this game with the bases loaded in the three run lead. They gotta get Dave Marshall out they're going to go Joe Horlin. Let's take a look at Joe Horlin here. He um, played most of his career for the White Sox. This particular card, he's with the Oakland A's in 1972. Would get a World Series ring for them. So, a good way to finish his career. I believe Horlin passed away earlier this year, I thought, as well. So, sad, sad news for that. Uh, Joe Horlin, in the seventh inning... We'll, with the bases loaded and two outs, we'll face Dave Marshall. The pitch to Dave Marshall. 55 off Horlin is a bouncer to short. This is Marty Perez, a 3E38 shortstop, and he makes the play. A big out, and the Mets did not score. Nice defensive play for Marty Perez. Stretch time here in Atlanta. We have been listening to... Feats don't fail me now. And uh, that's kind of like the Atlanta Braves situation. Uh, they cannot fail now or their season will be toast. Little Feats, 1974 LP. One of their better ones featuring no Atlanta and yeah, skin it back. Great stuff by Little Feet. Bottom of the seventh inning. Trying to add on, Kuzman's a starter eight. He's given up six runs. And you got Cardi and Aaron. I think they're going to take Kuzman out after six. The the uh, Met bullpen is underused anyway. I saw Acosta come on in the seventh inning. As Kuzman just had a very ordinary day today. Below ordinary, really. To the Met standards. And in the seventh, it'll be Rico Cardi. 64 off Acosta. Homer won a five fly ball. Rolled an 18 and flies out. Hank Aaron. Two, five, you saw the card earlier. This is the second two home run game of the series and Hank Aaron is on that MVP list in the National League having a masterful season for the Braves. And they need him to get on a torrid streak to come back in this series. Seven to three now. Marty Perez, one five, pops to third, two outs. 
Dusty Baker. 610. Bouncer to short. Harrelson's a 2017. Makes the play. 7 3 game. Horland will continue. He's a relief four. Bud Harrelson, down four runs in the eighth. The Mets, 2 7, single for Harrelson. Bobby Heiss. Yeah, well, why not try a hit and run? Who knows? He's going to try a hit and run here. And it works! Unbelievable. He rolls a three on the hit and run, and the Mets get a huge break and got runners at the corners, nobody out. Well, that kind of makes this a little bit more interesting. Now, on the Met bench, you've got uh, a couple lefties and Frank Johnson, a righty. Um, but Horland's good against lefties and righties. I don't see them coming out. Actually, though, if you do pinch hit Wayne Garrett or Crane Pool, they certainly would bring one of their lefties in to face him. Uh, so Ted Martinez will bat with runners on the corners, playing back with a big four-run lead. The pitch to Ted Martinez. 35! Let's take a look at the Ted Martinez card. Well, folks, yeah, Ted Martinez, that's about a, as far as a ball he can hit against a righty. He had one homer and 263 at-bats. But, uh, and hit 255 for the 73 Mets. Useful player, could play all over the place. He's playing third base today. 3-5 off of his card is double one to 11. He gets the single on a 12, and suddenly we have a 7-4 game again. And this is not what the Braves wanted. They did not want the Mets to come to the plate with a tie, tying batter. And they'll have Cleon Jones, Grody, Mays, Clendenon. The bullpen, Modrabowski's the closer. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah. The minute you bring in Modrabowski, he gives up a ton of homers to left-handed batters. You'll most likely see the uh, crane pool wing Garrett's of the world come in. They're going to ride Horland a little bit longer here. Oh, boy. Uh, with uh, runners on the corners, nobody out. It'll be Cleon Jones. The pitch to Cleon. 57 off Horland is a K. Again, Horland's point of weakness, he's a relief four, so he's no danger of that here. They get an out. They have runners on the corners. Going to continue to play back for Jerry Grody. 1-7 is a sky to left B question mark. You could try and tag up Bobby Heiss and make it a two-run game going into the ninth. Heiss is a 15-runner, 16-17 against the Cohen Arm. 18 is a 1, and he scores on a 17. That added up to a plus 18, and he rolled a 17. So that's a sack fly. We have a runner at first and two outs, and the batter is Willie Mays. Let's take a look at the card. The Mets acquired Mays with the 70 card instead of waiting to 1972 and 73 to get him when he was, you know, a little bit too old to be effective. They ponied up a lot. They gave away Ken Singleton and two draft picks to get Willie Mays in the carrier of a league. So, big moment here for Willie Mays and the Mets with a runner at first and two outs to your tie run is Willie. Here's the pitch from Joel Horland. 3-6, single one to eight, and rolls an 18 and lines out. So it stays seven to five. And now with some life left in the Mets, suddenly, we're going to have Tug McGraw come on in in the eighth inning. Facing the bottom of the Brave lineup here. Billy Cohen. 57 is a K. Believe it or not, they're going to bring in uh, Ralph Gar for defense. He's actually a three. Cohen's a four. Tommy Aaron. 5-12. Rolls with the pitcher. And Earl Williams, 69, center. McGraw makes quick work of the Braves. We go to the ninth inning, and they're going to turn it over. They're going to take uh, Horland out of there. They're going to go straight to their closer, Mo Drabowski, acquired in the offseason. Still has a little juice left in him. 1970 Mo, uh, Mo Drabowski is 5 and 4 with a 352 ERA for the Orioles. Would get himself a World Series ring, helping close out games for that team, along with Dick Hall and so forth. Uh, susceptible with a long ball against lefties, but it is the launching pad in Atlanta, so that's Paul's for the course. Par for the course. <laughs> 
In the ninth, it'll be Don Clendenon leading off. Clendenon, 110, bounces to short. Duffy Dyer, well, he will be pinch hit for. I'll go Wayne Garrett, because you need an on base more than you need a home run. Wayne Garrett will bat for Dyer. Pitch to Wayne Garrett. 210 is a sky to right field. And with two outs, this game will come down to Dave Marshall. Let's take a look at Dave Marshall's card. 1972 Mets. Hit 250. Um, interesting player because he does have the walks and the power against left-handed and right-handed pitching, which is nice to have. So Dave Marshall, the pitch to Dave. 212 is a roller to first base. And the Hotlander Braves have won a baseball game, folks, and they snap the losing streak. Now we're desperate for that. Again, of course, the Mets still have home field advantage throughout the rest of this series with a 3-1 lead. But the Braves get a win in Fulton County. Congratulations to the Braves. Drabowski gets the save. Three up and three down in the ninth. Joel Horland put out the fire in the seventh inning. Then he struggled in the eighth, gave up three hits, two runs and a K. George Stone did enough after getting worn down a bit late in this one. Gave up seven hits, uh, three runs. They were earned. Walked five, struck out a batter. For the Mets, McGraw struck out a batter. Acosta, solo home run. But Jerry Kuzman did not have a typical Jerry Kuzman day. Gave up nine uh, hits. Give up six runs, and they're all earned. That's not going to help the ERA. A walk and four strikeouts. 1019, 0108, 7-10, 5-10. 5-2-1-5. Actually, the Mets put 15 men on base today to 11 for the Braves. So this was a game. We talked about how the Mets uh, don't have a lot of left on base. They did today, and it hurt them. But the pitching of Kuzman hurt worse. So that is your game four final. And we'll look at the year-to-date numbers for the two squads as we go into a game five. The Braves, are they a team that can come back 0-3? You know, coming back 0-3 in Stratomac is a heck of a lot easier than in traditional Major League Baseball. And it's happened to teams this year. Uh, the problem is their opponent is the Mets, and that's going to make it tough. But the Braves certainly have the bats to put up crooked numbers anytime they put their mind to it. So, uh, let's start with the Braves. With that win, they're 15 and 14. They're hitting 303, but it's a 448 ERA that's holding this franchise back. Looking at the pitching staff, George Stone is 5 and 0 out of that three spot, whereas no other pitcher has a winning record. Mo Drabowski actually has seven saves, believe it or not, so that's uh, that's good news for the Braves. But your star hitter, folks, it's no shocker here. Hank Aaron has 18 home runs to pace Major League Baseball this year, and he is moving up the MVP chart of his team. Well, yeah, he might be top in the chart. Tony Perez is also at the very top of the MVP voting right now for the Reds. 18 homer and 36 RBI in 29 games. Amazing. Doesn't leave his club in hits, though. That belongs to Felix Mian, believe it or not. 47 for 117. 402, folks, for Felix Mian. You're a brave second baseman. So they have plenty of bats here. You know, Cardi has got 41 hits in 29 games. The pitching's holding them back. The New York Mets are now 19 and 8. And of course, yeah, everybody's pitching well. Even with this loss, Kuzman's still 4 and 2. Seavers having a fantastic year, as expected, 6 and 2. Matt Lacks, 5 and 1. As far as the Met bats, Don Clendenon, 8 homer and 30 RBI. That's pacing their offense. Uh, you got Cleon Jones with 41 hits of his own, 41 for 122. 336 average for Cleon. 
So with that, we will give you the results of what happens at the end of this series. We have played 453 games at this point, hitting 263 as a league with a 387 ERA. Uh, game five in Atlanta, and then six and seven in Chase Stadium if necessary. Thanks for tuning in, folks. We'll see you next time. Well, baseball fans, Game 5 was uh, eventful. We'll call it that. Tom Seaver, Phil Negro on short rest. Wayne Garrett leads off the game with a solo homer. Then in the third inning, the Mets had a couple more. On a ground ball, on a single by William Mays, and scoring a runner from third on a double play. 3 nothing game. Top of the fourth inning, and it gets ugly. You get couple singles, a walk, then ground ball to uh, the shortstop Mari Wills, and he plays it into a single, which could have been a double play. And of course, what happens with the bases loaded? Willie Mays hits a grand slam. Uh, and that single looks horrible now. For the Braves, as they Mets take an eight to nothing lead with Tom Seaver on the mound, and we're about ready to pack the airplane and head out. But Seaver somehow got, gets distracted with a shutout through three innings. He opens up the fourth, a solo homer by Dusty Baker, manages to load the bases and get out of it. Well, that was an escape trick number one. Escape trick number two was not as easy. Uh, he loads the bases with two outs, but it's Cleon Jones dropping a fly ball in left field, a two base error, and then a Mari Wills two run single. And suddenly this is an eight to five game. What is going on with Tom Seaver? He of the 176 ERA. Well, folks, it gets worse in the sixth inning. Gail Hopkins, a single. Rico Cardi, a single. Hank Aaron, a double. It is eight to six with runners in scoring position and Seaver is taken to the showers. And the Mets are going to try a strategy they used in the World Series last year, also in a Game 5 of a Best of 7 series. They bring Tug McGraw in, possibly to pitch four innings in relief, as he is a relief four. That's how they won the World Series last year, and they're going to try the strategy, because they're going to have a bunch of days off, and McGraw will not pitch again, probably, uh, needing uh, days off after pitching this uh, many innings. Strikes out the first batter. A ground ball scores the runner from third, but it is Daryl Evans who gets the single to tie the game at eight, giving Seaver a no decision. So, with the breath of life, Phil Negro, uh, given up for dead in the fourth inning, but he's allowed to continue, and I let him continue because he's a knuckleballer, and I figure he can get, you know, throw a lot of pitches and give up a lot of runs, so I let him pitch long at the games. Uh, the Mets strand a couple of guys in the seventh, Meanwhile, uh, uh, Tug McGraw is sailing along here in his effort. In the top of the eighth inning, though, uh, Negro is left in there too long. He gives up a double to Wayne Garrett, and he gives up a double to Willie Mays. Uh, just left in there too long, of course. And then uh, Mike McQueen does not help matters. The lefty comes on to face to get Crane pulled out of the game, and uh, Dave Marshall and... Uh, Bobby Heiss come in and it's a 10-8 game. Two run lead for McGraw and he's smelling the same success he had last year. Uh, he could pitch all the way into the ninth inning before a chance of point of weakness and he does. And he would give up just two singles in the last three innings of this game to get the 10-8 win out of relief. So McGraw, who has been underused to this point, would you believe Tug McGraw had not pitched 10 innings total up to this game, which is game the 28th game of the season for the Mets. He's pitched like nine and two thirds all year, nine and two thirds. He pitches four innings today <laughs> because this game matters more than anything, just to put a dagger in the Braves season, possibly. Four innings of relief, three singles, no walks, eight strikeouts, Tug McGraw, Deja vu, just like last year. Uh, they win the best of seven series, four games to one. Last year it was the World Series against the Tigers. This year it's against the division rival Braves. So heck of an effort for Tug McGraw when it matters most. Let's look at the overall standings now in the National League as we go to the All-Star break. 
The New York Mets have gotten the 20 wins. That's the most you can win uh, in our setup through the All-Star game. The Reds a half a game behind. The Mets have the tiebreaker against the Reds head-to-head. -head. So one and two, but the Reds, of course, they can recover that half game in the postseason tournament. Uh, the Dodgers slumped all the way to three, and Las Vegas is at four. These Astros and Giants were in the playoffs a year ago, and they currently had terrible starts. They're the worst two teams in April, but they've gotten hot since. And yes, though they are currently in uh, playoff seating, their records are not very impressive at all. Just a game or two over 500. In the nutty National League, where you got a 500 Arizona team, the Rockies a game over, the Cardinals at 500, you got the Marlins a game over 500, the Braves at 500, and even the Left 4 Dead Pirates, who are probably the best team of these non-division leaders I've mentioned. At three under 500, they could catch fire and start knocking teams around and get back into the wild card hunt. So that's where we are currently in the National League as we go into the break. And uh, we will see you next time.